This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 210, Why I Cut My Blogging Schedule in Half. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you grow your tribe and your bottom line through insanely good content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is January 19th, 2017. Hello, hello, or as we say in Texas, howdy. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. By the way, if you hear some crunching noises in the background, I've got a pug on my lap who is munching very diligently on her bones, so apologize for any distractions. Okay, uh, just a reminder, this podcast is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and now Google Play Music. So if you like what you hear, please feel free to click on over and subscribe. Also, my new book, The Content Marketing Coach, Everything You Need to Get in the Game and Win is now available on Amazon in book and Kindle format. And here's what social media, excuse me, content marketing guru Joe Polizzi had to say about the book. He said he called it a simple yet effective guide to an approach that most businesses get flat out wrong. Do yourself and your business a favor and take a deep dive into this book. You won't regret it, unquote. To learn more about the book and to download a free chapter, go to contentmarketingcoachbook.com. Last week, we marked the first full work week after the holidays, hard to believe, with some tips on starting the new year on, a, on the right foot. Not a right foot, the right foot. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or via the RSS feed. Today I'm sharing with you a big change that I'm going to be making on my blog or rather to my blogging practices and the reasons behind it and why I think it's a good idea in our changing environment. But first it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of news you can use. If you use Facebook Live and are a little frustrated that you can only use it on mobile devices, well, we have some good news for you. Facebook is rolling out the ability to go live from your desktop camera. Um, it, let's see. It is, uh, again, rolling out the ability to, to go live from your page via your desktop web browser. Now, previously, as we know, Facebook Live was only available via mobile apps, and soon we'll all, all be able to broadcast from our desktop computers. Um, so good news, I know for me, I you know I kind of live at my desk and it'll be, it'll be great to be able to do those live videos from that camera. Um, and that is uh, no word on when that's going to be available, but it is coming out. Another new feature that is on the way will be the avail uh, ability to designate live contributors for your Facebook live videos. So currently on your page... The only people who can broadcast live as the page are admins. If you're an administrator of the page, then you can broadcast live videos. Well, it's kind of awkward if you want to give someone the ability to broadcast as the page, but don't want to give them full admin access. So, for example, if you want to give one of your junior team members the ability to use Facebook Live to cover an event that you're hosting, but you don't necessarily want to give that person full admin access, you will soon be able to, to give them a live contributor um, a live contributor permission. Um, it will let you designate contributors who can broadca broadcast live from the page without having any other admin permissions. Uh, this is just the beginning of the rollout. Facebook just announced it. No word on when it will be complete and available to all users, but we will, of course, keep you posted. Okay, Sophie is has wandered away and wandered back. So um, <laughs> she's a little indecisive today. Twitter, news out of Twitter. Twitter has announced it will shut down its Dashboard app on February 3rd, 2017. Now, Dashboard... It is a mobile app that was launched just last June with the goal of helping businesses connect with their customers and their communities and also showing insights about individual tweet performance. Twitter has stated in a tweet that it, quote, hopes to bring the best features from Dashboard, Dashboard to the broader Twitter community in the future. But as of right now, on February 3rd, Dashboard will be finny. And I, gotta, I, have, to, I have to confess here, I had downloaded the app when they first 
um, launched it. And I came across it when I was flipping through my phone the other day. I was like, what the heck is dashboard? And I clicked on it. It's like, oh, yeah, that's the Twitter analytics thing. Um, and and. I, I, I guess they haven't, it hasn't really caught on. So um, no word on what will replace Dashboard or what Twitter's plans for the future are, but February 3rd, no more Dashboard. Okay, our content hit of the week is a post on Social Media Examiner by Bill Widmer called Five Ways to Repurpose Your Popular Social Media Posts. Now, we talk a lot about repurposing on this podcast, and I openly confess that I I, I do a poor job in repurposing my own content. I, I It's just not in my MO to go back and see what I've done before, before I create content. Um but it is important. You know, we put a lot of time and thought and effort into these posts and, you know, we get want to get the most bang for our buck. Well, here in this post, Bill shares five ways to find and repurpose your most popular Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram posts. So first, which is really helpful, he goes into how to find those posts, how to figure out which posts were more popular. So you're going to go into your Facebook insights and how to find your most popular tweets and your most popular Instagram posts. And then he shares some creative ways to repurpose those posts. For example, you can repurpose well-received tweets as graphics. You can take a screenshot of the tweet and then share that as a graphic on Facebook or Instagram cool things like that. It's a very neat post. And I will, of course, provide the link in the blog post for this episode. That uh, blog post, again, is five ways to repurpose your popular social media posts by Bill Widmer on Social Media Examiner. That is it for this week's news feed. If you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, please tweet it to me at at Rach Parker so that we can share. Now it's time for this week's Spotlight segment, Why I Cut My Blogging Schedule in Half. This month, I made a big decision to make a change to my blogging practices, and I'll tell you what that is in a few minutes. But first, I want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, first, uh, first thing I want to mention is that I write all the resonance blog posts myself, with the exception of a few guest bloggers, and I've had maybe three three over the last six years, um, I'm it. And and I figure, you know, I have to be the face of the brand because people hire resonance for our writing ability. And, um, you know, I'm the face of the brand and the voice of the brand. So I insist on writing all the brand's content. So around the end of 2016, around the end of every year, things get slow business-wise. And I take that time for uh, for reevaluation and also time to get caught up on on trends and major developments. And it's not that I'm not aware of these developments, but I really take time to sit and think about, okay, what adjustments do I need to make in my own practices to keep up with the times? Because I keep up with all these all these news stories, these developments to share here on the podcast, but how am I using that information to um, to adapt myself? And one of the major trends, in fact, I wouldn't even call it a trend. It's it's where our where our practice is moving is we are seeing a lot of um, renewed interest in long form content, longer blog posts, and also things like um, ebooks and and white papers. But I want to talk specifically about blog posts. We've seen the studies that indicate that longer form content number one performs better in search, and number two tends to get shared more often on social media. And this is kind of puzzling because, you know, we keep hearing these this advice, you know, keep it short and sweet and very, very small attention spans on the web. So why the heck um, is, is long form content the, the thing these days? Now, I want to say it's not that snackable content. Remember that word? Remember that term snackable content? You don't hear that a lot anymore. That was, that was, oh, that was so 2014, I guess. Um, but I was reading a post by the sales lion, aka Marcus Sheridan. And if you're not familiar with his blog, I recommend that you keep up with it. He should always share some great insights. I love one thing that he talked about. He talked about the content arms race. And so what he means by that is as the the content as the content universe let's say becomes more and more crowded more and more competitive and we are all struggling to up our game to stand out so it's like you know all these countries we have all these armies and one and we're looking out saying okay how can we get the edge how can we how can we up our game 
And one way to do that is with longer form content. So what does long form content have to do with the competitive nature of our of what we do? Well, for one thing, many of our competitors are unwilling or unable to spend the time, resources, and yes, money on long form content. They want to get their their cheap little blog posts so they can check content marketing off their to do list. They can get their their keywords out there. They can get the listicle published, you know, once a week and just just get done with it. And they don't they they don't have that commitment that. Um, um, other brands might who are who are willing to go the route of long form content. Also, there is a perception among audiences that longer equals higher quality. Now, we all know that's not necessarily the case. Um, I've read many crappy 2,000 word blog posts, but that is how audiences tend to see it when they when they come across a post and see that it is longer. And by longer, I mean you know 1,500 words or more. Then that that gives the impression of being higher quality. And then as for the SEO question as to where longer blog posts attract more search traffic, Google is of course mum on the subject. They say very little about uh, what its what its um, algorithm is looking for. But there's plenty of anecdotal evidence to show that all other factors being equal, longer f- posts will attract more search traffic than shorter posts. And I was reading an article on the Yoast website. If you're familiar with Yoast, it is a WordPress plugin that helps you optimize your posts for search. So they're very in tune with the SEO scene. And their take was, I, I think it was. An it was an interesting point. Longer content gives Google more words to munch on. So Google sends out its bot to um, to find posts with these with these keywords or articles with these keywords, and. So with a longer blog post, you have more instances of your targeted keyword without veering into that dreaded territory of keyword stuffing. And keyword stuffing is when um, Google looks for the percentage of your total word count that's taken up by keywords, and that is a red flag. So um, so by, by publishing longer blog posts, we're giving Google more more stuff to munch on, more more fodder, more, more keywords to attract the, the search bot. So... This is what I was taking in at the end of last year in December. And as I was thinking about this and thinking about long form content, I realized something about myself. And that is, I'm bored. I am capital B bored. I've been blogging at least once a week since 2010, since I started this company. And when I st- actually when I started blogging, I wrote full blog posts three times a week, and lately I just feel like I've turned into a production house. You know how there are different types of agencies. There's the creative agency that does the super cool work, and then there's the production house that just kind of cranks out whatever they're asked to. I felt I was in production mode, and you know, once a week, go to the calendar, grab the topic, crank out the requisite 500 to 600 words, get it published, and then on to the next thing. And you know, I, I I love I love writing. I'm a writer through and through. If you were to prick this finger, then ink would flow out. But um, but just doing that quick, get it out there week after week was just, it just wasn't satisfying. And, um, okay, here I'm, I'm, I'm going to, here I come again with one of my gym analogies. It's like doing 250 arm curls with a one pound weight. Okay. Yes, it will work the muscles, but you don't feel like you're getting anywhere and it is boring as hell. So I got really excited when I thought about um, producing more long form blog post media content, more research based. Um, I got really excited when I hear about that. The, the thing is, I'm busy, like super busy. And writing a quality 2000 word blog post every week is just not realistic for me. So I decided to cut my blogging schedule in half. And I am now creating those long, long form posts, but only twice a month. So every other week you will see a long form blog post and I'm going to keep up with the podcast and the, um, my weekly videos, that's not going to change. So there will be content on that blog, but these written blog posts will happen once every other week. And this was excruciating for me because it violates a huge rule that I always told people, they would ask me for advice on blogging. And I would say, look, if you don't publish once a week, you might as well not publish at all because you can't, I mean, there's so much content out there. If you're getting in front of people less than once a week, then you might as well not bother. But, you know, we live in a different world now and the 
environment we function in, uh, that we try to thrive in, is constantly evolving. And this is the way that things are going. If we're going to compete, it's looking more and more like longer form content is the way to go. So here's my plan. For the first quarter of 2017, I'm going to do this once every two weeks, longer form blog post approach. And then at the end of the quarter, I'll see. I'll take a look at the results and no, see if I notice any changes in traffic or any changes in um, social shares or other KPIs that I follow. And of course, I will report those results back to you if and whether I decide to continue on that route or go back to the way I did things before or try something totally different. So if you find yourself at a similar crossroads, if you want to tap into the long form content approach, but just don't have the capability to do it on your current schedule and you want to join me in this experiment or a similar experiment, experiment please feel free. Um, just make sure, number one, you're keeping track of your results because experiments do us no good if we don't um, see, how, see how they fare. And then um, also tap in, shoot me an email, shoot me a tweet, let me know what you're doing and we will uh, embark on this experimental journey together. So that is the scoop on why I cut my blogging schedule in half. If you have any questions or want to add to the conversation, please feel free to tweet me at at Rach Parker. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. Today, we've been talking a lot about long form content, specifically longer blog posts. And if we're going to stand out in this hugely noisy, crowded world that is the content universe, um, it's looking more and more like long form content is the way to go. And I want to share with you one shortcut to creating long form content, those longer blog posts, is to repurpose shorter blog posts into one longer, meatier, in-depth post. So if in the past you did maybe four or five shorter posts around a particular topic and those are bundleable, and if that content is still relevant, you can leverage those posts to uh, compile a longer and meatier blog post. Now, we never, never want to do a direct copy and paste of an entire post, just just pop it in there. But uh, but we can repackage that basic, that basic information. So get that on your to-do list this week. Flip through your published blog post from the beginning of time. That's where interns come in handy. Um, find some commonalities. Find maybe four or five that can could be bundled into a longer blog post. Then use those groups to create some lovely long-form content. Okay, campers, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play Music or via our RSS feed. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would so appreciate it. Also, remember that my new book, The Content Marketing Coach, Everything You Need to Get in the Game and Win, is now available in book and Kindle format on Amazon. To learn more about the book and to download a free chapter, visit contentmarketingcoachbook.com. As you know, I always like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from one of my favorite authors, Mark Twain. He once said, quote, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education, unquote. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care.